For the last about 10 months now, I've been playing around with one of the coolest technologies around. It's this headset right here called Sensei and it contains five different brain enhancing technologies all in one device. Now I played around with this thing for a while and shared my experience, which I'll pop up in a card now for you to check out. If you haven't seen it already, I won't go into too much detail about what this is because I've already covered that. But fast forward today, it's been nearly 10 months since I got this thing and I've logged a couple hundred sessions. It's one of the few devices that I use just about every day. And sometimes I'll do two sessions in one day. In in short, what this technology does is it allows you to optimize your brain to enter your desired states on demand, whether that's focus or deep sleep or introspection, behavior change, creativity, logical thinking, you name it. You can think of it as a technologically enhanced form of meditation, only more effective, time efficient, and for most people, a lot more powerful. The whole idea is to train your brainwave patterns to a healthy, non-traumatized state. And if you're alive today, you've experienced some form of physical, chemical, emotional, social traumas that impact the different states your brain is able to reach and sustain. There's an entire range of brainwave frequencies and because of these traumas we experienced earlier in life, many of us can't even access entire bands for sustained periods of time. Each frequency band corresponds to different regenerative and health benefits for the body and mind, let alone put you into different mental states to accomplish what you want. By doing this training, you reset your brain's baseline to a healthy state from which you can work towards reaching your potential. Now, when it comes to this technology, which is usually called neurofeedback, essentially the more inefficient or the more problems you have, the larger the results you're gonna see. But even folks at the very top of their game, professional athletes, Fortune 100 CEOs, and other elite performers sometimes spend up to $100,000 on a package of neurofeedback training to help them get to the next level. After several hundred sessions with my device across all of the different modes I've unlocked so far, which is most of them, I'm better able to remain calm when life stirs up some chaos. I feel less activated by little things that happen here or there, such as someone cutting me off in traffic or a petty argument. And I'm better able to get back in control to be in the driver's seat and avoid complications. Although I haven't quantified it and it's hard to isolate it to just the neurofeedback, my sleep has marginally improved significantly to me. I'm able to focus better for longer stretches of time. The Sensei team also shared with me some pretty impressive stats regarding the impact of their headset on real users' lives. I'll share some of them on the screen right now. But 77% of users reported better sleep after one month of their sleep program. 93% of users reported improved reaction time after their ultimate resilience program. And 10% of users reported reduced brain fog after one month on the Clear Mind mission. Two others that I wanted to share 76% of users who reported difficulty with focus saw an improvement after just one month of using their device. 73% of users who felt stress was an issue reported less stress after one month of use. During their different modes of a specific kind of training called alpha brainwave training, my peak alpha frequency has increased by 0.5 to 0.7 hertz. During my calm training, my analytical thought has decreased from 9% of each session down to just 6%. Keep in mind that all these stats are just from the first cohort of users because this device has only been on the market for less than a year so far. One of my complaints in my initial review is that the company was new and and we didn't know if they were going to innovate at all or release anything to us. Well, just recently, they've rolled out all kinds of features, such as the ability to compare your historical scores, a new guest mode that lets you share your headset with friends and let them try it for themselves, better ability to distinguish signal from the noise, so you're training what you want to train, and things like EMFs are not disrupting your session. One thing I noticed after extensive usage is that one of the modules of this headset is called Genius Pulse and it quantifies different biomarkers of your brain's performance. Based on your results, you take one test before each mission and one test after each mission. And based on your results and the way your numbers change,
change, they recommend the next mission for you. All of this takes a lot of the confusion and guesswork out of brain training because that is one stumbling point of a lot of devices. Either they're cheap and they're very simple, they're overly simplistic and ineffective, or they're extremely expensive, they're the clinical units, and they're also incredibly complex and require many hours of studying just to learn the basics. Just recently, I was fortunate to hop on a nice long call with their founder, Paula, and she affirmed to me that this is a company that's innovating. I interviewed Paula and Dr. Drew on my podcast last year. If you're interested in this kind of thing, you'll definitely want to check that out here. We reconnected and she shared some of the updates with me. And based on her answers to my questions, this is definitely the most innovative company in the whole brain training space. They're working closely with their manufacturer to iterate, even though the product's only been around for a year and some big improvements are coming both on the hardware side and the software side. I'll share some of what I learned on that call with you now. I'll start with their brain assessments via what they call their genius pulse. They built their initial model on what's called the flanker test. It's extremely accurate and the system actually uses a wired connection to the controller because the signal transmission of Bluetooth is too slow. They also have to use the same controller for everyone in order to maintain that one millisecond precision that is required for clinical grade accuracy. So yes, it's not a medical device, but if they chose to pursue that, they have the infrastructure in place already. One issue is that you can't take that test too often or you habituate to it and, and it loses some of its power, but they're building things outside the flanker test that you'll be able to perform more often to see how your cognition changes over a shorter time frame. Something that really confused me when I was just starting with this was that when I got my headset, downloaded the app, I went to go straight into gamma training and I couldn't find the type of training that I wanted to begin with. After recording the podcast with them and talking to Paula, that's one thing that most companies in the space do not mention is that the sequencing of your neurofeedback and brain training matters tremendously for your overall results. So although I didn't like it, it was very important for me to get a solid foundation in alpha brainwave training and heart coherence before I started layering on the more advanced stuff like training gamma. When it comes to training, Dr. Drew mentioned that it's best to stick with a particular mission or type of training for a period of time before moving on to the next. If you follow their missions, it's not a problem that'll happen automatically. But if you don't, that's useful to note. During the training sessions themselves, when you're training the high frequency ranges like beta or gamma, you don't need long periods. You'll get the max return on your time at just 20 to 30 minutes. Whereas when you're doing something in the lower frequency range, say alpha, you're still getting maximum benefit as you go up to an hour long session. Although really, if you just do 15 minutes a day, you'll still get a ton of benefit out of this. On the other side of training, so far I've talked only about neurofeedback, but this device has the ability to train an entirely different form of biofeedback called heart rate variability or heart coherence as they call it. This is really another pillar, very important to train. And it's one of the ones that I feel within a few minutes each time I do a session. The goal is to get your heart rate to look like a nice smooth sine wave. And when you do that, you're bringing all your different bodily systems into harmony, you're entering the flow state, and regardless of whether you do neurofeedback also, just doing that heart coherence training at your resonant frequency breath rate is excellent for your nervous system and overall health. Within each session, you hear a couple different sounds and they range in volume and also clarity. When your brainwaves match the frequency range that you're training, it gets clearer, it gets louder, and the rewarding sounds get more often as well. So you'll know that you're hitting the right range when you hear those instruments. For example, when you're training gamma and you hear the piano by default, that means your brain has just had a spike in gamma brainwaves. One of the most frequent questions I got and I personally had is how do I improve my sessions? Why isn't my score improving or how do I make it improve faster? At the beginning of every session, Sensei will tell you to do two things and that is to soften your eyes, essentially just defocusing them and to soften your tongue. And both of those are physical cues helping your body shift from the sympathetic, zoned in analytical mind to the relaxed, present, parasympathetic, autonomic nervous system state. So those two alone are 
prerequisites for high scores and any form of training. But then I also learned that depending on the training style, putting your attention or focus on different parts of your body helps even more. For example, when you're training gamma, you want to focus on the center of your head. When you're training what they call resilience or heart coherence, you want to focus on the center of your heart. And if you're training transcendium, which is one of the last ones you unlock, then you focus on the center of your belly and you just put your attention there throughout your session. They've also designed the entire sequence of training so that when you do a boost, which is a form of cranial light stimulation, you'll see a little star next to the meditation that complements that training style. When you do that form of meditation, it'll tell you where to focus and then you can apply that knowledge to improve your score whenever you're doing that form of neurofeedback training. After a couple hundred sessions at this point, I have a few tips for you that should make the whole process a lot more smooth. The first one I just mentioned, and that's to use the meditation feature when you're doing a boost so you can understand where to focus to maximally increase your score. Another is that when you open the app to turn up the volume on your phone as much as you can, it just makes training so much easier, especially if there's any background noise around you. When you're getting started with neurofeedback, it's so much easier to understand how it all works if you do the sessions that allow you to have your eyes open and then make sure you choose the eyes open option in the Sensei app. Once you're familiar, then doing the eyes closed sessions is also important, but when you're starting out, it makes the acclimation process that much easier. But when you're just starting out, using the eyes open sessions makes the acclimation process a bit easier. At the same time, eyes open training is not available for all the different brainwave bands. In fact, neurofeedback pros will actually hook up the gear and then they will check the signal quality by having their eyes closed and opening them. And if everything's working properly, having their eyes closed is supposed to roughly double their alpha brainwave activity. Now onto the topic of scoring. I was a bit surprised because I was getting scores at a certain level when I started out and then after I trained more, my scores in certain categories declined. They've updated their scoring algorithm a bit, so that's to be expected. But I was also a bit surprised to learn that the score ranges themselves were calibrated on some of the world's best meditators and people with decades of neurofeedback experience. When you're reviewing your own scores, the two that you want to care most about are first and foremost, the streak. How long can you maintain your presence in that specific brainwave band that you're training? And then the other one is the flow. Between those two, if you just focus on those, you see improvements, you're going in the right direction. Previously, I mentioned that in my written review of Sensei, which I will put in the description below, I responded to some comments saying that I was having problems with the app and the signal quality and connection things. Well, about 10 app updates and several hardware firmware updates later, and much of that has smoothed out, I no longer have issues with any of the system. If you have a Sensei headset, drop a comment below and let me know your experience so far. Or if you're on the fence, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about my experience so far. But now, the part I'm most excited to share with you, and Paula okayed me to announce this, some of their future plans. The first and the one that I'm most excited about is a new feature they're releasing, hopefully at some point this year in 2024, called Brain Years. Brain Years is Sensei's calculation of your brain's biological age. Biological age testing is a huge trend right now, showing how well the different organs and bodily systems in your body function compared to what's standard for someone your calendar age. Their approach is going to use the sensors they have built into the device to output how well neurologically you're functioning. As far as I know, this is a first of its kind, and it's not too much of a stretch to imagine a future where this is used in clinical research as a cheap alternative to more invasive and quite expensive brain imaging technologies. All right, another one I've been asking for since I got my device is some kind of social leaderboards, some social gamification, because there's nothing like some friendly competition to encourage you to use your device and not just let it collect dust. That's on the way too. 
and then one that will be cool for large groups and specifically sports teams, perhaps certain business teams too, is what they're calling group sync, or that's training group coherence. I don't have many details on that one yet, but if group work matters to you, this could be a cool device to explore. All right, the other change that I wasn't that thrilled to see is that the pre-order pricing that I mentioned in the previous video has now ended. Not all that surprising because the device has been around for a year now, so it's no longer a pre-order, but it did go up in price a couple hundred bucks. In my opinion though, for around 1500 US dollars, this is a steal. It's more expensive than some of the other neurofeedback systems marketed at consumers, but this right here is an entire platform. It's the closest you're gonna get to clinical grade neurofeedback and not just neurofeedback, but five other technologies, including heart coherence and HRV training specifically to your resonant breath rate, which is something that not many companies do. It also has some nice soothing meditations. It has the ability to quantify your brain function and performance. And it also has one of the better implementations of transcranial photobiomodulation, TPBM as it's often abbreviated. One of the other devices I know that does TPBM costs around this much just for that device itself. There is an ongoing membership of about, I think it's $280. So that's a bit expensive, but all in all, nothing else comes close to this amount of value all in one device, which is why I've been traveling India for several months now. And this is one of the things that made it in my suitcase. Although I'm an affiliate of theirs, I purchased my headset long before they had an affiliate program. I bought it with my own money and only after I enjoyed it and had recommended it to others did I join their affiliate program. So if you use the code URBAN, that should save you 5% on your Sensei order. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or for an even faster response, check out the article that I wrote on Sensei and leave a comment there. Thanks for your time and I look forward to connecting with you. Until next time, be an outlier.